There is no divine relationship outside a covenant. You have no business with any spirit without a covenant. The power that stems from a relationship with a spirit is produced on the altar of the covenant a man has with the spirit. And when the Lord was speaking to me, spoke to me about covenantless Christians. There's no, there's no power in their priesthood because there's no covenant that priesthood is responding to. There's no rainbow in them. And when the Lord began to speak to me, he told me, he said, no man can cut a covenant with God. It's God that initiates covenants. No man can initiate a covenant with God. No man on his own can generate covenants by himself. And then he began to tell me that what precedes covenants are encounters. Because if God is not revealed to a man, you will not know how to work with him. You will not even have the knowledge of God. This is why the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Because to fear God, you must first have encountered him. When you encounter God, you now come into the knowledge that God is. And when you come into that knowledge, you can now encounter the covenants of God. So a man becomes wise. He begins to exhibit the higher Sophia when he first has an encounter with God. And then when God encounters him, in order for him to have a kind of relationship with God and draw power from that relationship, he enters into a covenant with God. That is what makes him separated. It is covenant that makes a man holy. It's covenant that separates you from every other person. When God becomes your God and you become his people. This is why Yeshua said, not everyone who said to me, Lord, Lord, because it's easy to say to him. He said, not everyone who said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven or those that do the will. What is a will? Terms and conditions. That which has already been spoken. And to come into that which is already spoken, you must have an encounter with the one who speaks. So the Bible said, the grace that brings salvation. There's a covenant called salvation. So the grace that produces salvation has appeared. It has manifested himself unto all men. The manifestation of Christ is very important in building a relationship with Christ. He said that that do the will of my father, he will my father love and will come and make our board with him and I will manifest myself unto him. The manifestations of God. It's possible to actually try to contact a God you have no covenant with. And the Lord was speaking to me. He told me, he said, don't you know God, him can be quiet. So who is the one prophesying when God is quiet? Meanwhile, the diviners and the prophets can actually speak lying dreams when God is quiet. So if a man doesn't know God, he enters into deception and delusion. Many spirits can take advantage of his ignorance and form a pact with them. Listen, God doesn't do things in secret. If a spirit hides himself from you, and tries to enter into a pact with you. That spirit is trying to deceive you into entering what you do not know about. God is not a deceptive God. He said, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will show myself unto him in a dream, and I will speak to him in a vision. The Bible says, our God is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are we. He reveals himself to you by his holy name. He reveals himself to you. And when he has revealed himself to you, and revealed his name to you, because in the spiritual world, a spirit will not reveal his name to you if he doesn't trust you. For the name of a spirit to be revealed to you is actually an honor. And also, a spirit can reveal his name to you before your destruction. So that we know who did this to you. So names in the spiritual world is a very big deal. There is a power that comes when a spirit utters his name. Because when you know the name of a spirit, you can summon him. And only the one who has been given legal ground to act by that name can actually receive the power of that name. If you hear the name and you try to act by that name, you become an imposter and you can summon a spirit that will kill you on the spot because he doesn't know you. This is what it means not to take the name of the Lord in vain. An unclean man cannot try to walk with a clean name. The name he needs to call upon is salvation. If a man is unclean, the name given to him is salvation, which is Yeshua. Savior. That's the name given to him for salvation. If he calls that name for any other thing, Yeshua said, I will write on him my new name. Names are big deals in the spirit. So covenant. Power comes from covenant. Without covenant relationship, there's no power anywhere. Let's not deceive ourselves. A covenant has to be revealed to you by encounter 
And then you enter into that covenant fully understanding the terms of agreement of that covenant. This is why men who God caught covenants with, they are patriarchs. There is a group of covenant called the bilateral covenants. And there's a group of covenant called the unilateral covenants. In the first, God enters into a covenant with a man and demands nothing from that man. He enters into that covenant from the integrity of his name. And so whether you cooperate or not, because he has entered into that covenant and he has swore, sworn an oath, he's going to keep to the terms of that covenant. This is the kind of covenant God entered with Noah. He said, I know after now, man will still become rebellious. Man will still become evil. Man will still be desperately wicked. But I enter into a covenant with you today that I, the Lord God, would not destroy the earth this way on account, on account of man's rebellion. So no matter what man does, I will not destroy the earth this way. One day while I was still in school, a heavy storm was coming. And the storm was so great that everywhere, in the afternoon, everywhere became pitch black. And it was coming like this with massive wind. And immediately, I think whilst we were running on the road trying to look for shelter, we saw a mighty rainbow. So it's as though, meanwhile, the Hebrew word used for that, what we call rainbow, is actually a bow, the bow of a warrior. Let me explain something about covenants. This was how covenants were entered in those days. Now, the Hebrew word covenant means cut. It means to cut something into two. So before they entered into covenants in those days, they would bring certain animals and they would cut it into two equal parts. And then they would lay one on the left and one on the right facing each other. And then when they speak these covenants among themselves, they would pass in the middle of this covenant. Do you understand already? And what are they saying? If I break the terms of this covenant, let it be unto me as it is to this animal. So when God instructed Abraham to cut asunder different types of animals, he, he didn't cut the dove, but when he cut the bullock and what God demanded of him, the Bible says in the evening when it was dark, a flaming torch passed in the midst of that, that sacrifice. So God was telling Abraham that if I fail to keep to this covenant, let it be unto me, God, as it is with this animal. Meanwhile, God was the only one who what? Passed through that. So that's a unilateral covenant. It was binding on God's integrity. So whether Israel rebelled against God or not, God would bring that his word to pass. The Israelites actually entered a covenant with God when the Red Sea parted and they passed on dry ground. That thing was a covenant operation. That was when Israel actually became a nation unto God, separated by covenant. The Parting of the water is actually a what? A sign. And the tearing of the cutting is actually a sign. When covenants are entered, that covenant is a covenant of access to God. The one we find in the life of Christ. And everyone who passes through that torn veil has entered a covenant with God. This is why when you test of the power of the aid to come, it's quite dangerous to now turn away. If you break the terms of that covenant, it will be unto you as it was to the Egyptians. They were wiped out by the river that drowned them. That's how powerful covenants are. There is no priesthood outside covenant. There's no power outside covenant. There is no coincidence in spiritual things. To operate spiritual things, you must operate it from perfect understanding. It is when a man keeps to the terms of his covenant that he wields much power in the covenant. So there were covenants God entered and some were binding on God's integrity and others was partnership. God enters a covenant. The Mosaic covenant, for example, is a unilateral covenant. It's a partnership covenant. So it has, it has a cause and a blessing. And then it tells you the terms of agreement. In this covenant, this is what you will do. This is what I will do. When you do this, this is what I'm going to do for you. But when you do this, I will now have the right to punish you on account of breaking this covenant we have together today. And when they agree to the covenant, and blood was sprinkled upon them, the covenant was sealed. So Israel, when Israel walked in accordance to the commandments of God, as it is captured in the terms of agreement, the covenant they have with God that made them a holy nation, Israel was impermeable. You could, you could not defeat Israel. If the weapons of man no longer works, God will send angels. But whenever Israel disobeyed the terms of their covenant, even AI can defeat them. So we have a lot of covenant-less Christians. 
Since you became a Christian, do you understand the new covenant in Christ? The mystery that backs your life is covenant. There is no success by coincidence. Nobody got successful by luck. They are generational covenants. Covenants cannot be abolished, but it can be replaced with a higher covenant. The covenants your father has entered with idols is not abolished. If you are in Christ, it's only replaced by something superior. What the Bible calls a blood that speaketh better things. Something that is higher in the realms. It begins to speak for you and everyone who comes into the covering of that covenant. So for that evil covenant to defeat you, it has to defeat that superior thing in the spirit speaking for you. There must be an intelligence that backs up your life. You cannot, have, you cannot afford to walk in this world as a normal man. Covenants can shut the mouth of lions. Covenants can redeem the guilty. The Bible said, shall the captive of the mighty be delivered and shall the lawful captive be set free. The Bible now said, the captives of the mighty will be delivered and even the lawful captives set free. Many politicians are not judged today, not because people are not complaining, because they have covenants that silences the will of the people. You hate them, but the moment you see them passing, you don't know where you start running and hailing them. It's a covenant. It's a spirit. You hate the man. Let them say he's coming here. You will not know where you stand on the road. And then you'll be, hey, once he passes, you'll say, stupid man. We hate him, but he's sharing my elections. Go and collect the money. Covenant is powerful. This is called covenant. And so in scriptures, we find diverse types of covenants with which God walked with holy men. God is the initiator of covenant relationships. And the Lord is bringing this to our understanding today so that we can come into the power of our work with God. So that we will not operate as orphans in this world.